back to Fast Freddy RC, and today we're going to start the build process of the Tamiya Hornet. Now, this is one of the most iconic cars that Tamiya ever produced. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, I am not going to be doing this box art. This is going to be turned into a Tyco Turbo Hopper. Now, a couple of things before we get started. One, if you're planning on building this with me, do get yourself um, some ball bearings. Uh, it's, I know they, it comes with uh, metal bushings and plastic bushings, but really, if you want this car to last, um, especially if you're a beginner and maybe this is going to be your only car for a, a long time and you want to keep it, do make sure you get a set of ball bearings. Now these are Fast Eddie, but it can be any metal ball bearings that you can find in a hobby store. Um, so definitely do that. The other thing is, this is going to be a beginner build series. Uh, I did one for the Grasshopper, uh, which you can find right here. But I'm going to do this one like I've started doing them, where I do it step by step, so each video is a separate one, so that you can easily find what you're looking for as we go along. So, initially, what I want to do is let's go through the manual and just sort of see what we need to be looking at. Now, here I do talk about this with the uh, grasshopper build but they're just taking you through some of the different items that you're going to need they have safety precautions um, and then they talk about the radio and there's just a couple of other things that they're telling you, know, you about or warning or cautioning you about you don't need to worry too much about that but here is what they're telling you for tools now I find that because these uh, models, believe it or not, these are not Phillips screwdrivers. These are JIS, Japanese Industry Standard. And that's why I have a set of Tamiya screwdrivers. So if you're building this car um, and you find that your Phillips screwdriver isn't really settling into the hole very well, this is why. They're JIS, Japanese Industry Standard. That's why I have a set of the Tamiya screwdrivers because they're JIS. So everything fits into the into the screws so much better. So that is a suggestion. Um, and I do have a link down below of where you can um, order a pair, it, order a set, I should say, if you choose to do so. Now, if we go to step one, you can see here that we're going to be attaching the rear shaft. So right away, we're going to be working on the gearbox. And again, if you're planning on building this with me, and if you're planning on getting ball bearings, do get those before you start, because we are working on the gearbox right away, and you're going to be needing those ball bearings right away. So just a suggestion, you need to get those ball bearings to start with before we start this whole process. Now in step two, we're actually working on the gearbox and putting both sides together. So you can see up above where we were putting in the differential gears, etc. We're putting in all the bearings. Everything's going into the back end at this point. So do get those bearings. So step three, we're gonna be attaching the motor and the pinion and putting the motor into the gearbox. In step four, we're gonna be attaching the damper mounts uh, so these are for the rear damper mounts and you can see there's a there's a piece of plastic in the hole of the chassis We're going to need to remove that as well in step five the rear axle stays We're going to be building those these are what's going to allow the car to do side to side uh, I've mentioned earlier that the grasshopper will go up and down This is the same chassis, but they've added a piece to allow the suspension to go side to side Which should make the car a little bit more stable even though it is still a solid axle. Then in step six, we're gonna be attaching the gearbox. So we're attaching it to the chassis. And then in step seven, we're gonna be working on the rear dampers. And a key difference to the grasshopper, the rear dampers on this are oil-filled shocks. Um, and they're their performance kind. So it should actually provide a lot more damper or I should say a lot more suspension or better suspension 
than the grasshopper. So in step eight, we're gonna be working on the oil and getting that all set up. So I'll show you how to do that. And then in nine, we're gonna attach the rear coil springs. And then in 10, we're going to attach the rear dampers uh, to that gearbox and attach it to the chassis. It's gonna be very cool because the grasshopper's um, back end is quite a bit different because it only has the friction dampers. Then in step 11, we're gonna be charging the chassis battery, which there's a reason for that. And in this instruction manual, it's because we need to make sure that the servo is in neutral. And I'll talk a bit more about why you need to do that when we get to this step. So that's step 12 for the Hornet. Then in step 13, we're gonna attach the steering rods. So those are going to be attached to the servo. And of course, we've got to install that servo saver, which we do in step 12. And then in step 14, we need to attach the servo to the chassis. Then in step 15, we're gonna be installing the ESC. So I'll show you how to do that. You will need one of those. They usually, um, you'll need to buy that separately from the radio. Uh, they don't come with them very often anymore. Uh, there is a CPR unit, that's kind of old technology. We don't see that very much either. So you're looking for an ESC. And of course this kit um, didn't come with one at all, but there, there are the Tamiya ones, but most kits now come with a Hobbywing 1060 speed controller. So you may luck out and get one of those with the speed controller. Then in step 16, we're gonna be attaching those front uprights. And then in 17, we're gonna be working on the front arms. And then in 18, we're gonna be attaching that front bumper. Uh, then in 19, we're gonna be attaching the front coil springs. And then in 20, we're gonna be working on the front wheels. Now, <laughs> a lot of people will find the next couple of steps extremely challenging. Um, I was having issues with it myself, uh, and I figured out a way of doing this so that you don't completely stress yourself up and, and just go into a hissy fit, because a lot of people do. And if you go here, there is a video that I made specifically to show you the easiest way to attach these wheels and get the rubber over the plastic. Trust me, you may want to look at that before you do anything else. It'll save you a lot of hassle. Then in step 22, we're gonna be attaching the front wheels. And then in step 23, we're gonna be attaching the rear wheels. Moving on. In 24, we're gonna be installing the battery. So basically we've got our, our battery door cover that uh, it's an interesting design with this one. Uh, definitely that beginner build um, battery cover. You, you'll see what I mean when we get there. And then in 25, we're gonna be working on the steering adjustments and making sure that the wheels are in line um, before we do anything else, because you want the car to be able to drive straight when you're pointing it straight. Then in 26, painting the body. Well, this is where things are gonna change on my end. You may decide to do this box art, and that's fine, but as I said, mine will not be, so this is where things on my end are gonna look a little different. However, I will um, do the body assembly and, and paint the driver figure um, in, I don't know what colors yet, actually, but I'll figure that one out. Um, I'm also going to be trying to install, anyway, a spare tire, because on the Tyco Turbo Hopper, there was a spare front tire that was attached to the back. I don't know if it's going to look that good on this car, but I'm going to try. Then in 28, there's going to be the markings. Well, the markings I've got are going to be totally different, because I've got the, uh, the correct ones for a Tyco Turbo Hopper, specifically for the Tyco, or before the Tamiya Hornet. They were designed specifically for this car. So my markings and decals will be totally different. And then in 29, we're gonna be attaching the body. And of course, at this point, we're back to how I will be doing it, you'll be doing it, how we're all gonna be doing it. So that we'll be back to um, normal steps as of 29. 
And I believe that is it. So on the back, there's a lot of safety precautions in the next little bit. They kind of tell you how to, you know, turn on the car, turn off the car, why you do it in one way. Um, it's even giving you some practice, um, you know, things you can do to practice your driving. Even over here, it's showing you, you know, how to enter a corner, how to exit a corner, that type of thing. Um, and then there's sort of uh, troubleshooting uh, parts list as well, which shows up in the back. Because if for some reason you, I don't know, broke something or you needed spares, they tell you which parts tree they were from. And then you also know what you need to order if you needed to do so. So that is the overview of the Tamiya Hornet manual. So we're going to be getting started on this fairly quickly here. Uh, if you need any other help or you have questions, be sure to email me. Um, and please like, subscribe. It helps the channel, but also you'll want to get notified as more videos come out on this build so that if you're building this with me, you'll definitely get the video uh, in your feed. So until next time, we will see you in another video. Thank you.